visitors come to us from Fort Collins, Colorado. Beaverton, Oregon, just outside Portland, is the site for an early season battle of epic proportions. It's number two, Colorado State, versus the third ranked Panthers from Chapman. Last night, it was the Tim Taggart show for the Rams as he deposited four balls past Simon Fraser goalies as the Rams ran over the clan with an 11 to four victory. While Chapman attack man Andrew Clayton had the hat trick, including a 24 yard bomb in an 11 to nine win. Southridge High School, the site for the finale of our debut weekend on Lax TV. Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left handed shot by Vasilovsky. Welcome across fans from around the world. I'm Dan Matthews with Todd Walker, and you're tuned into the Lacrosse Talk pregame show. Let's take a moment's break for the national anthem. Uh, one, two, the flag. Thanks, folks. We're about ready for action here at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Again, Dan Matthews and Todd Walker here to call the action on LAX TV. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineups for the Chapman Panthers. Andrew Clayton, attack, Palmerston, North New Zealand, Soldiers of your Army, you don't know me. Tommy Wolf, defense, Sandy Utah, Waterford, BLI Brink. Zach Nickelman, defense, Venetia, California, Yellowstar High School, Castles Made of Sand, Jimi Hendrix. Justin Shields, midfield, Berkeley, California, St. Mary's High School. I go to work, Cool Modi. Madison Fiore, attack, Las Vegas, Nevada, Faith Lutheran High School, Illmatic, Noss. Timmy Andrews, attack, Lacoste Canyon High School, Encinitas, California. Matt Sathram, goalie, Las Vegas, Nevada, Bonanza High School, and last thing I played was Base Cannon. Uh, Ryan Helmich, midfield from Lake Forest, California, uh, played at El Toro High School, and Friday by Rebecca Black. Pat Knowles, long stick midi, from San Diego, California, Torrey Pines High School, brothers and sisters by Soja. Matt Walrath, uh, long stick midi and face-off specialist from Fairhaven, New Jersey, Rumson Fairhaven High School, and Dos Gardenas by Buena Vista Social Club. There's the starting lineups for the Chapman Panthers. Colorado State is going to start with Jack Reagan in goal. And as you uh, heard on the intros, we'll see Matt Stra Sathram for the Chapman Panthers. Uh, Todd, both teams with a real impressive win yesterday in their respective games. Yeah, looking forward to this one, Dan. Uh, two, two good games to, to kick off our season uh, last night, and uh, this, should be, this should be a really good game. And number 21 for Chapman, Knowles. We're looking at Knowles and Warfield 
at the X to start this one off. Hap Knowles, the transfer from the University of Colorado, uh, rated as one of the premier long stick minis in the game at this level. Knowles wins the draw, but it's gonna be scooped up by Colorado State. And the Rams are gonna be heading right to left in the white with gold trim. Chapman in the red with white numbers. Rams with the clear, Andy Sigmund gives it up top to Alex Devlin. Rams set their offense. Dodd, what are you expecting out of this game? Uh, not expecting a real high scoring game here tonight, Dan. Uh, the way I expect both these teams to, to play pretty buttoned up and, and really, really uh, uh, take a lot of time off uh, each possession, off the clock on each possession and work for a, uh, their best possible shot. Neither one of these teams likes to take uh, anything that uh, that isn't a, a almost sure thing and, and uh, I expect to, expect to really see the ball getting worked around before any shots are taken. Chapman picks up the loose ball. They're gonna start to clear behind the cage with goalie Matt Sathram directing the offense. There's a clear, Knowles with it in his stick. Gives it off to Shields coming across midfield. Uh, these two teams definitely showed last night why they are number two and number three in the country. Uh, we do expect those polls to change However, this week the poll released uh, the Tuesday morning after the BYU loss to Cal Poly earlier in the week. Yeah, kind of a vagary of the of the polls, Dan. The, even though even though the poll didn't come out till Tuesday, and uh, after that Monday game, the uh, BYU loss was not reflected in the in the poll. So uh, things things uh, from from this weekend and from that game are going to change considerably. Rafter dodges from top, and Reagan makes a save. Let's take a look at those polls from earlier in the week. Uh, as you see, BYU at one, Colorado State two, Chapman three. The Sun Devils fell a couple of spots last week. Uh, they, they've won uh, their games this weekend. They could become the new number one, depending on what happens in this game between, B between Chapman and Colorado State. Boston College has the week off at number five. And there you saw the rest of the poll. Long stick behind the cage for Colorado State. Loses possession, it'll be Chapman heading the other way. That's Shields. Carrying it upfield along the sideline. Both teams very deliberate here in the early going. Yeah, I think we're, <laughs> we're gonna get a steady dose of this this entire game, Dan. That last clear by uh, CSU, the, the long stick did a nice job getting it across midfield, but uh, you wanna see him give up the ball. You don't want, the, uh, you don't want a long pole uh, carrying the ball behind the cage. Thirty-four is Alex Williams. He gets the ball behind the cage. Nice dish out front. Shot behind the back by Timmy Andrews. Saved by Jack Reagan. Chapman will pick up the loose ball. That's Clayton behind the cage to Andrews. I thought Andrews held onto the ball a little bit too long that time, Danny. If he he, he had a uh, he had the forehand shot uh, about a step and a half sooner and uh, held on it too long and had to had to take the backhand shot to get his best angle. Fiore lost the ball behind the cage for Chapman. Colorado State scoops it up and the Rams are going the other direction. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got an offside call on uh, flag down on uh, Chapman. Fisher has the ball behind the cage. Dishes out front, no shot available. The Rams again very deliberate in their setup. Swinging it around to Taggart. Clear across the field, down low on the crease. Ball dropped, but scooped back up. Yeah. 
So fight for it at the top of the box. Getting the flag down for the offsides. Yeah, and uh, some of the fans may have noticed, Dan, that uh, after that flag went down, the uh, the uh, Chapman attackman went went ahead and went down and, and played defense. Once the once the flag goes down and he's been offsides, that same player cannot be uh, cannot be called offsides again. So the uh, it's it's your advantage to just go ahead and go down and play uh, play that extra man on the D. Yeah, absolutely, make sure that uh, have that extra advantage <laughs> and and not be scored upon. Ram set it up up top. Rams circling the offense. Chapman packed into his zone, a 3-2 zone. Now they're more of a matchup zone. Rams looking for the right shot. We're a little over five minutes in with no score so far between the Panthers and the Rams. And the penalty has expired, Dan. Uh, CSU did not get a shot off while they were extra man. Casey Carter on the near side, gets it up top. That was Alex Devlin. Behind the cage is Mike Wolf, freshman attackman from Don Bosco Prep in Ramsey, New Jersey. That's Carter. He rattles the twine with a goal for the Rams and they're up one to nothing. Yeah, nice shot off the uh, off the wing there, Dan, by Casey Carter. Uh, again, we, we saw this a couple times last night. Uh, Casey did a nice job of using his uh, his defender as uh, actually as a screen as he comes out at him, uh, kind of ducks out of the way. Hap Knowles kind of ducks out of the way, and, and the goalie cannot see the ball coming from around his own defenseman. We've got a legal procedure. The uh, CSU face-off man jumped, and uh, it'll be Chapman's ball. Chapman with possession. Behind the cage is Timmy Andrews. Yeah, and he stepped in the crease, Dan, while he was uh, making a little back and forth move behind the, behind the cage. He uh, put, actually put both feet in the crease. Good effort by Chapman to take the ball away from the Rams. There's gonna be a push called, however, and they're gonna give it right back to Colorado State. Hayden Porter will start the ball on the restart. He kicks it up to Josh Gregg. Greg will clear the ball across midfield and establish Colorado State in the offensive zone. It's Logan Chandler. Giving it up to Matt Jewey. Jewey had a good game last night. That's Grable, gives it back to Jewey. Jewey's gonna dodge the crease, but can't get inside for the shot. Again, both teams very deliberate on offense. We're halfway through the first quarter. It's one to nothing, Colorado State. Up top to Jewey, over to Grable. Looking to the middle on the feed and unable to connect where the Rams and Jewey will scoop it up. Back outside the box. Josh Gregg with it. Kicks it back around to Austin Fisher. Rams working the ball to the far side of the field. That's 22, Corey Hughes with the ball. Coming around the near side. Nowhere to go for the Rams. 
Yeah, got a pretty early uh, double team slide on that, Dan. And uh, really, if he if he'd uh, had his head up and would have been able to move that ball to the crease uh, real quickly, he had uh, had an open guy on the crease. Dewey with a nice swim move, and the Ram, Rams have been uh, warned for stalling. Dutra's marked up Dewey. That's Matt Sathrum out of his crease on the defense. He'll retreat back to the goal. Rams still under the stall warning. That's Fisher. Ball dropped, scooped up by Helmich. Helmich is gonna make the clear for Chapman. They've got numbers in transition. And Helmich is gonna pull it back out, not wanting to force the shot. And he gives it up to Remlinger at the top. Offense inverted with Clayton up top now. Clayton, the one last night who had the 24-yard bomb that was never picked up by the Oregon goalie. Andrews behind the cage. Yeah, this is their more normal set here, Dan, with a uh, 3-1-2 with uh, Clayton on the crease. Zervis dodged the right alley. Reagan saw that one all the way. We'll go the other direction. Yeah, there was a shot that was just too far out and not enough on it. Uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna beat a, a goalie uh, like Reagan with a shot like that. What a nothing your score with five minutes and ten seconds left in the first quarter. We've got our first timeout. This one charged to Colorado State. You're watching the Rams and the Panthers right here on Lax TV. Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left handed shot by Vasilovsky. with his today interview. Short come out of break. Dan Matthews and Todd Walker back here at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Number two, Colorado State holding on to a one goal lead against Chapman late in the first quarter. We had the opportunity to, to speak with CSU coach Alex Smith a little bit earlier today, and we'll get a look at what he had to say momentarily. In the interim, Colorado State will start with the ball up top coming out of this timeout. State sets the offense, that's Grabinus. Ball worked around up top to the far side of the field. Devlin with it up top back over to Grabinus. Left hand cradle for Grabinus. Back out up top, nobody there on the high pass. Devlin will scoop it up and we'll start over. That's Chris DeCaro. Near side to Grabinus. Grabinus shoots and scores. Two to nothing Rams. 4.30 to go. In the second period, in the first period. Yeah, that was a shot really I would have expected uh, Southam to make the save on Dan. Not, uh, it, was, it was a good shot, but uh, he was far enough out and uh, Southam had a, a clear, enough, uh, clear enough look. I would have expected him to make that save. And he did get a piece of it. We're raring to go. Let, let's take a listen to what Coach Alex Smith had to say about what it would be like to face Chapman here at Southridge High School today. Um, very well coached. Full speed all over the field. They are as blue collar a 
team as as there is in the MCLA. They fly to the ball, they ride hard, uh, they do all the small things well. They've got very good players. Um, you know, they, they're probably pretty similar to us in the terms of um, turnover and graduation. So I think that we're both still trying to find ourselves a little bit here probably in the early season and making sure um, that we stick with the game plan and, and um, we're looking forward to that game. We lost, uh, we lost by two in Colorado State last year uh, in Fort Collins and we think it'll be a good game, should be a good matchup. That was actually head coach Dallas Hartley from the Chapman Panthers. Apropos, the, the Panthers won the faceoff and had possession of the ball, so we got to hear what he had to say uh, about the CSU Rams. We've got a timeout on the field with 4.06 to go in the first quarter. Two to nothing, Colorado State. We'll be back right after this message from Bam Shaft. Bam Shaft, one of the presenting sponsors here on LAX TV. Dan Matthews, Todd Walker with you. From Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon, Colorado State with a two to nothing lead over the Chapman Panthers. And so far it's uh, really been all Colorado State. We haven't heard from Walrath, we haven't heard from Knowles. If you neutralize those two in transition, you're doing your job. Yeah, uh, Colorado State's really doing a nice job of possessing the ball. They've had a, a couple a couple unforced turnovers with uh, uh, with some loosey-goosey passes, but uh, uh, Chapman can't score if they don't have the ball and uh, Colorado State's really doing a nice job. Passing. Chapman now though, and see if they can get off the next Williams. Dodging into the crease, the shot sails wide. It's gonna be chased down by Timmy Andrews. It'll remain Chapman possession. Andrews on the restart. He's got Fiore behind the cage with him. And now Fiore's got the ball. Rounding it up top to Helmich. How much takes it inside? Nice shot, the goal. That's Fiore standing right on the crease with a bad angle shot, but it gets into the net and it's two to one, Colorado State. Yeah, Fiore really did a nice job there, Dan. Yeah, you'll see Fiore come around. He gets uh, he gets position right on the on the corner of the crease there. Nice high fake to get the goalie going up high, and then uh, just dumps it down down low and gets puts it right past his feet. So that's a nice job getting to the cage by Fiore. That one coming at 11:24 of the first period. Two to one, Colorado State. We got Hat Knowles at the X for the Panthers and Dan Warfield for Colorado State. Warfield scoots it back, Dewey picks it up. Colorado State heads into the offensive zone. Nice use of the, the two hands by Dewey. He loses possession, but CSU's there to bail him out. To the inside, nice spin, losing possession of the ball was Austin Fisher. Yeah, Austin kind of turned the wrong way on that play, Dan. He really had the, the catch and shot there, but he, he rolled away to his left, away from the goal, and uh, gave the defenseman time to close on him. If he if that had been a, just a catch and a shot, catch and a quick stick, he, he uh, good chance he would have had a goal there. Rams cycling the offense. Taggart with it on the near side. Again, Chapman really packing the zone in tight. Little bit of matchup. Yeah, it looks like they're back into a man-to-man -man here, Dan. No, they are still in the zone. I think teams live to make fools out of us sometimes. <laughs> Rams bring it all the way back out up top. Oh 
Yeah, we'll see if they throw, uh, if maybe uh, Chapman throws in the wrinkle they did last night uh, where they actually run the zone with the uh, the three poles up top and, actually, and drop the biddies down low. Uh, had several uh, points last night in last night's game where uh, uh, the uh, attack actually had short sticks on. That's Austin Fisher driving to the cage. Nice shot. Right past Sathram, three to one, Colorado State. And there's the there's the problem you see with the zone, Dan, as we as we uh, spool the replay back up here. Uh, you see Fisher, and you, they kind of they kind of flood the zone with two guys, and and you get confused with the uh, with the two men uh, kind of overlapping in that zone, and, and nobody ends up taking the ball, and uh, Austin Fisher had a free free path to the cage. Great job by Fisher and hitting the far side post with the shot. Fisher 6-1, a buck 70 out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado's Rock Canyon High School. Much of the CSU roster made up of the local kids from Colorado and, and Colorado State with a, a pretty dominant program at the MCLA level over the course of the last 10 to 12 years. That's Josh Gregg heading to the cage. Feed down inside. Nice block on the shot attempt by Sathram. And Sathram will scoop it up behind his cage and let Chapman head the other way. Just over a minute to go here in the first quarter from Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. <laughs> I have no, no idea, Dan, how uh, Sathram got a piece of that. That, that really should have been a goal, but a great job of just getting enough of the ball to keep it out of the cage. Great save. This, this event actually a, a fundraiser for the local high school program as well as the local youth program. And uh, I, I wish the weather had been a little bit better. We could have seen a, a little bit bigger crowds out here. That's Fiore. Fiore's got the ball for Chapman. Takes it to the net, shoots and scores. Nice job by Madison Fiore, cutting right alongside the crease, setting the shot low on Jack Reagan, and Reagan just can't get there to save it. Yeah, let's watch Fiore. He, he does just exactly what you want, you want to see your uh, midfielders or attackmen do. Is uh, He gets kind of about a half a step on his man and, and uh, just ducks underneath him where uh, the defender has no chance to get to his stick, uses his body to shield the, shield the stick, and, and dumps it right past the goalie. Nice move. So we'll head back to the X. And it's looking like a reversal of yesterday where we uh, had beautiful weather until game time and then it decided to rain for four hours. Now we've had uh, rain most of the day, but it looks like the skies have broken. And yeah, we're going to have nice weather, hopefully for the duration of this one between number two, Colorado State, number three, Chapman. That's Walrath. Walrath takes the shot. Uh, we were talking with Coach earlier today about Walrath and, and that penetration and how they're trying to get him to uh, pass a little bit more rather than rather than shoot and, and this time he takes the shot and probably an ill-advised shot at that. Yeah, that was a great example, Dan, of uh, where Coach Hartley really would rather see him give up the ball to, to a short stick and, and get a and get a better shot out of that out of that transition uh, game. He he came down, uh, didn't really have the the, the uh, time and room and, and took a took a shot that uh, had very very little chance of going in. That's the end of the first quarter, and this is ga game is everything we expected it to be. It's one goal separating number two Colorado State at number three Chapman. Three to two Rams as we head to break. Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks. 
San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Again, three to two. Sends our it up score as we head into the second period by Colorado State with the one goal lead over the Chapman Panthers. And uh, really a, a solid game uh, for, for both teams so far. Yeah, it's uh, really been a, a, a game of a possession. And uh, uh, we had spoken a little bit earlier today with uh, Coach Alex Smith of the Rams, and uh, here's what he had to say about what he was expecting. so much respect for Dallas and, and for what Chapman does. Um, you know, he was one of the best players to ever play at our level, um, kind of before the MCLA really became what it is. So, um, you know, he's a great coach. He's a, he's a good motivator. They're going to be really good on the defensive side. Uh, goaltender's playing really great. Um, you know, obviously their attack is really explosive. And they do some interesting things where they, uh, you know, attackmen are playing midfield and midfielder playing attackmen. And so for us, you know, it, Again, it's, it's a game where, yeah, we want to be concerned about them, but we really want to be concerned about us and not worrying about who's where on the field and just playing lacrosse, you know. And if, if someone's up top, then we're playing them as a midi. And if someone's at X, then we're playing them as an attackman. We're not going to get, you know, mixed up in this whole chasing people around the field, trying to get matchups. So that, that, that's really one of our biggest game plans um, for tonight, making sure that um, we're worrying about us and, and playing the game that we want to play. They, they can run in transition. They can play settled offense. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to the game. As you saw during that interview, uh, Fiore narrowly missing his hat trick, uh, which would have come real early in the game. Uh, Chapman doing a really good job working to get Fiore more involved than he was yesterday. That's up top to Devlin. Devlin's going to dodge the right alley, spins and switches to the left, has nowhere to go. They'll reset the offense from X. Devlin with the stick. He's going to try that dodge down the alley again. Good slide by Tommy Wolf, not letting him go anywhere. So flag down. That's going to be on Chapman. Colorado State maintaining possession. That's, I believe that's 49 Grayson Conkle with the ball on the far side. And with the ball down and out of the box, we'll see what this flag's all about. Yeah, we've got a, one minute for a slash, Dan. Uh, Helmich uh, got a little uh, over aggressive on the on the man-to-man uh, -man D over there on the wing, and the zebra caught him for a slash. Only called on the field was a one-minute slash assessment number 17 for the Chapman Panthers, Ryan Helmich. So Colorado State will reset the offense. The Rams in a man up position. Man up against Chapman with one goal lead. That's Conkle. Looked like he was going to shoot. Chooses not to. Keeps it up top and outside. That ball sails wide. It's going to be chased down by Mike Wolf. And it'll remain Ram ball. Hey, Colorado, Colorado State's kind of in a, a, a circle man up here, Dan. They're, they'll cut into a usually a 1-4. Uh, rotate around and uh, again look for that wide open shot either on the from the man up top or he, he can uh, drive and dump it down to one of the guys on the crease that's Devlin at the top and Smith with the ball now here on the near side that pass deflected on its way to the inside and scooped up by Casey Carter Carter back up top to Devlin Rams with it and a one goal lead. No scoring here yet in the second period. Devlin up top, cranks it, sends it wide to the near side. Wolf on the backup. There's another shot, it sails wide to the near side. I believe that one was by number 10, that was Casey Carter again. Yeah, Sathrum did a good job of get, just getting a little piece of that ball, Dan, just enough to keep it from going in the cage. This is Grabinas up top to Devlin. Near side to Conkle. Conkle left-hand cradle, switches to the right, shoots. Nice save by Sathrum on the shot. Down low by Conkle. 
who got a ball down on the ground and is unable to be run down by Matt Walrath. Again, that's the first time we've called that name tonight. And if you're, if you're keeping Walrath and, uh, and Hat Knowles out of it, you're doing your job if you're Colorado State. Get a great save by Sathram on that shot. And a good job sticking with the ball. We saw a little bit of a problem last night with all four goalies that played for, for each team in, in hunting down the ball after the save. Yeah, it's really critical, Dan, that the goalie uh, keep that, keep that uh, rebound under control and uh, get on top of that ball after making the save. Conkle was heading to the inside. Hat Knowles had him all the way, and here comes Walrath on the clear. He slips and falls. It's going to be picked up by Austin Fisher for Colorado State. We'll keep the ball in the box. Now we'll kick it out and set it up up top with Devlin. Devlin clears one man. It's picked up on the slide by Hat Knowles. Not, not a great shot there, Dan. Uh, too far out and uh, not enough of an angle. Uh, he's not gonna, you're not going to beat Sathrum with a shot like that. Now you had Hat Knowles sitting right on top of you, too, forcing the bad angle on it. That's an errant pass intended for Smith. He gets a stick on it and is able to keep it in the field of play and picks it up himself. Sean Smith will set behind the cage. Sean Smith, one of very few players, one of six players not from Colorado on the roster. He's a 5'10", 165-pound mid attackman from Amherst, New York. There's a shot. Another nice save by Sathram. Sathram doing a tremendous job staying with it. Again, we're seeing that he, he didn't know where the ball went after he deflected it, though. No, I made a real nice save on the ball, but, uh, you know, when it's going, moving that fast and uh, uh, sometimes the, the goalie just has no, no chance of uh, knowing where it's exactly the ball ends up. I'm Dan Matthews. He's Todd Walker. Your play-by-play -play and color commentators right here on LAX TV. Also host of the weekly talk show, Lacrosse Talk. Lacrosse Talk, the first and most comprehensive talk show dedicated to the creator's game. You can tune in every Sunday at 7 Eastern, 4 on the West Coast at lacrossetalkradio.com. The Rams circling the wagons, Fisher with the ball in the back. He gets it to Smith. Smith coming near side and fires it all the way out up top. That was Kyle Reynolds. Ball inside, great feed and a goal. The feed came from Tim Taggart. And I did not see the number on the goal score, but I believe that was number one, Mike Wolf. Yeah, great job, great, great uh, ball movement there, Dan, and uh, kind of a kind of a risky pass right on the right across the crease, and uh, you you're, you really run the risk of the goalie picking that pass off. But uh, good recognition uh, to see Wolf on nesting on that backside. Score four to two, Colorado State. That ball's going to be kicked out of bounds by the Rams. It'll belong to Chapman. And Helmich is going to come to the near side and put the ball back in play for the Panthers. Panthers content to keep the pace slow. Helmich has it up top. He's going to head to the cage. He's got three men sacking down on him. Unable to hold the pass was Fiore. We did have a timeout called by Chapman and uh, doesn't look like Colorado State likes the call very much <laughs> to say the least. I think they uh, felt that there was no possession when that timeout was called. Todd's nodding his head here in the in the press box, uh, agreeing yeah, I, with with Colorado State head coach Alex Smith. That was a pretty uh, pretty pretty skinny timeout call. Uh, he may or may not have actually had the ball in his stick with possession when the uh, when the timeout call was made. But the uh, official on the near side heard the heard the uh, timeout call and gave it to him. Hey, we haven't had the opportunity to talk about Walrath a whole lot, um, but I'll tell you, his coach and and many people around the country 
are very high on, on the long stick midi, Matt Walrath, who's a transfer from Stevens uh, College, a D3 school at the NCAA level, uh, transferred after and ha has really meant a whole lot to this Chapman program. Let's take a listen to what Coach Dallas Hartley had to say about Matt Walrath. Matt is the fastest player on the team. He's the hardest working player on the team. Um, you know, he's a senior and a captain for us, a great leader, um, finishes every sprint first, um, goes hard, very vocal for us, make sure the defense is talking. Um, we're a little young on the defensive side. We've got some sophomore, you know, we have a sophomore in Zach Nickelman. We've got a, a senior in, in Tommy Wolf that hadn't played a whole, you know, he was a, more of a backup long stick midi, but he's playing wonderfully for us. And we're starting a freshman, you know, we're starting one of two freshman defensemen down low. Um, so having Matt on the field uh, really helps communication wise. And that's really all the defense is. Again, uh, Dallas Hartley on, on Matt Walrath and Chapman with the ball coming out of that timeout. Working to set their offense, trailing four to two against Colorado State. Ball up top to Helmich. Helmich switches to the left. Picked up immediately by a second defender. It's a great job by the Colorado State long poles. That's Corey Hughes matched up on Helmich. Feet inside. Little too late to be able to get a shot off. Oh Andrews boy. to Fiore. Fiore was standing right on that crease <laughs> with another opportunity. I'm not sure if he lost the ball or if it was a great save by Reagan. No, he got the shot off. It was a great save by Reagan. He, he, uh, he eyeballed that, uh, that shot all the way in. Uh, Fiore put it low right where you want to see it, and uh, Reagan just made a great save. There's Fiore again. There's a low shot. That one's going to find the cage. Score now. Timmy Andrews picking up the goal for Chapman, making the score four to three. Colorado State about halfway through the second period. Yeah, I see uh, Timmy Andrews, Johnny on the spot there, picking up the loose ball out of Fiore's stick and uh, burying it in the, on the far side of the cage. Walrath at the X now for Chapman. Battling with Warfield from Colorado State. It's going to be scooped up by Walrath. And Chapman will take the ball into the offensive zone. That's Casey Wyman with the left-handed cradle here on the near side. I do believe, Todd, that I see sunshine on that field and <laughs> shadows. Well, we don't we don't want uh, anybody watching the game to be shocked that uh, that there you can actually see shadows on the field for the first time in two days, but uh, we do have the sun out. That was Mikey Marsh on unable to field the pass, and he was going to be left all alone on the on the charge to the crease. <laughs> Unfortunately for Colorado State, he was unable to handle it, and CSU picks up the ball and heads the other direction. We've got a possession change on an official's whistle. There's a bounce shot, sails wide of the cage. Chapman will maintain possession. That's Madison Fiore, who's gonna restart for the Panthers. Referee winds the clock. Speaking of referees, Todd, who, who are they today? Uh, our uh, referee is Brian Platts. Uh, the umpire is uh, Craig Poole, and field judge is Jason Bach. I'm sorry, Jacob Bach. So far, a very well-officiated ball game here. Doing a good job of letting the kids play, and, and I think that's always important to to deal with safety and deal with real flagrant penalties. Good but luck. At the same time, let him play. Andrew sends the ball wide. That was a great look across the field by uh, Fiore to find Timmy Andrews, and Timmy Andrews just uh, just put the shot a little bit wide, but a really nice, really nice look across the field by Fiore. 
Fiore, a natural midfielder who's made the move down to attack for Coach Dallas Hartley and the Panthers. He's become very effective down, down low in the attack. A.J. Rafter kicks it up top for Shields. Shields dodges the left alley. Nice move by Shields, right-handed shot saved by Reagan. Reagan again having a real solid effort. The question is, are we gonna, are we gonna see two goalies for each side tonight or are we gonna maintain some consistency? Talking about the officials, we got a flag down and a, a flagrant blow from behind. Yeah, it was a, a you're gonna call a, a technical 30 second push uh, on uh, uh, Clayton on the, on the loose ball, actually on the ball in possession of the uh, Colorado State player over here on the sidelines. Again, four to three, our score, 527 to go in the first half. That might be a, uh, could be a contestant for our Bam Shaft Bam of the game, albeit not a legal <laughs> hit. I'd much rather have a legal hit for for that contestant. Yeah, here's a loose ball prize. coming, and uh, yeah, just a blatant blatant push. Even even only had one hand on the stick, so uh, was, wasn't any way he was going to get away with that one. Rams working the ball around. That's Sean Smith here on the near side. He tosses it down low to Wolf. Up top, that's Devlin. He's got his hands free. Dops not to take the shot. He had plenty of room to launch that cannon from up top and, and was unable to do so. But the Rams are going to maintain possession of the ball. That's Grayson Conkle. We've got a timeout. Colorado State with under five to go here. In the first half, it's four to three Rams. You're watching MCLA Lacrosse on LAX TV. Dan Matthews and Todd Walker back at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Number two, Colorado State. And number three, Chapman in a barn burner so far here in the first half. And, and Todd, we're talking about the positioning of the sun. Right now, not going to affect Reagan because the ball's in, the, off, in their offensive zone. But uh, young Jack Reagan could be in a world of hurt uh, when the ball heads that direction. Yeah, if I'm Coach Dallas Hartley, I'm telling my kids uh, coming out of that timeout uh, to be working the ball down that right alley. Uh, bringing the right hand shot uh, coming coming down on the crease. Uh, Reagan is going to be virtually blind with the positioning of the sun right now. Not often you see a field that runs east west, but Southridge High School is home to one of them. And uh, regardless of the sport you're playing, it's got to be uh, brutal at this time of day when you're heading uh, in the wrong direction. Rams with it up top. That's Sean Smith here on the near side. Again, Chapman really packing into the defense. See some real solid defense and, and great slides. That ball's off the side of the cage and scooped up by Sathram. Sathram being chased down by Wolf. Long pass down the field. That's Walrath. <laughs> Walrath scoops up the ground ball. And here comes Chapman. And, and like we said, dodge that right side and shoot but they opt not to. That's Clayton on the near side with the ball for Chapman. Yeah. 
Seems to be lots of play on the, in the near corner in this game, and that's Fiore in that near corner for the Panthers. Shields with it on the far side, gives it down low to Andrews who drops the ball. Great defensive play, play by the Rams. Ultimately ball goes out of bounds on the far side. Rams possession heading the other direction. Yeah, Reagan's gonna need a lot of help here uh, the rest of this period from his defense to, to keep shots from even being launched on cage. Yeah, I was a little surprised on that position. Uh, Chapman really didn't make much of an effort to, to come at him from that uh, from that top left position. Uh, we'll see if they we'll see if they try and take advantage here in the last two minutes. Here come the Rams on the clear. Ball down on the turf. Andrew Clayton chasing it down. Ultimately scooped up by guess who? That's Walrath. He gives it to Fiore. Fiore down low. I think that shields on the far side. No, that's Andrews. Chapman settling the offense. Just over two minutes to go here in the first half. Four to two, our four to three, our score. Number two, Colorado State, on top of Chapman. <laughs> Polling this week's going to be real interesting after we see how things shake out here. First team in line for that new number one uh, would be Colorado State. Nice move. And that's a shot and a goal. I believe that was Fiore. Nope. Yeah, that was Fiore. 5'10", 165 pound. It's written in Las Vegas, Nevada. Knots the game up for Chapman. Yeah, really nice move by Fiore. Uh, just off the just off the crease there. Uh, juked his guy to one side, rolled back to his right, and, and uh, buried the high heater past the goalie. So I'm not a factor on that shot, but because uh, it came from the other side. But uh, <laughs> with with the uh, shot moving that fast and, and placed that well, the goalie has no chance. First team in line for that new number one. Warfield at the X for the faceoff. Be Colorado State. Late in the first half, Warfield gets the draw, and the ball's still on the turf. Ultimately picked up by Matt Jewey for the Rams. Jewey will pull the ball out. And we'll have some wholesale personnel changes for Colorado State. With time ticking on the clock, nearing a minute left to go in the first half. Colorado State working the ball around. Up top is Grabinas. He's working to get the shot. Not a great shot. Sails high and wide. Colorado State brings it back in. Devlin up top. He's marked up by Helmich. Pass behind the cage to Wolf. Nice swim move by Wolf coming back around the cage. Can't get the hands free for the shot. Kicks it up top to Devlin, who sends the ball out of bounds. Yeah, not a great shot there, Dan. Uh, again, uh, had a stick right on his hands, pretty far out. Uh, that's one that uh, Satherum's probably not going to miss. Wolf doing a lot of work on down low. Just off goal line extended. Walrath matched up on him. Tough to beat Matt Walrath. There's a shot by Smith, low. Couple of saves at the end of the half by Matt Sathram. We're gonna go to halftime, all knotted at four. It's gonna be a brand new ball game in the second half. We'll be back right after this. Harris makes two, three moves, scores!
Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be an goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left-handed shot by Vasilovsky.
Welcome back, everybody. Dan Matthews and Todd Walker with you here at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Our score at halftime is Chapman 4, Colorado State 4. Let's take a look at how we got here. It started early with a goal from Carter for Colorado State. Make green and, and put the ball right past Sathram. That gave the Rams a, a one to nothing lead. They would go on to build a, a three to two lead at the end of the first quarter. And then the second quarter got underway and CSU would extend that lead to four to two on this goal by Wolf. Yeah, that was a great look across the uh, crease by Austin Fisher and uh, Wolf did a nice job of catch the ball and bury it. Andrews and Fiore would combine on the next two for Chapman. And as such, we're not at here at four. Timmy Andrews doing a nice job picking up the loose ball, turning turn and making a quick shot. And then you got Fiore putting the ball high, far corner to make it four to four. Uh, this game has been everything we expected it to be, Todd, except for you figured six to five. I think we're gonna be closer to that <laughs> nine to eight or 10 to nine. Yeah, I, I'll still be surprised if we get the double figures in this game by either team, Dan, but uh, uh, tied at four doesn't get any closer than that. We certainly expected a tight ball game and uh, we're, we're getting that today and an outstanding ball game so far it's everything you'd expect it to be when you're talking about number two and number three I uh, wouldn't be surprised if these two get uh, to see each other again later on in the season while well, Rathen Warfield it's the W's at the X for the faceoff Colorado State's gonna take possession We'll see if they stay with the slow, deliberate pace, or if they're gonna really pump the ball around. Rams with the ball down low, that's Casey Carter for Colorado State. He kicks it up top to Devlin. Dodging the right alley. Again, the sun's gonna be a problem. Now it's gonna be a problem for Southern. Southern makes the save on that one though. And Chapman will go the other way. Yeah, nice job by Southern uh, following that ball coming out of the sun. Tough, tough field, tough sun field on that end of the field. And I think it's gonna be that way for most of the rest of the game. Shields will set the offense for Chapman. We wait for the substitutions. I don't know about you, Todd, but I'd, I'd like to see a little bit less specialty play and, and have our midfielders play in both directions, speed up the game just a little bit. It, it, wouldn't that be a concept? <laughs> Dan, I'd, I'd really love to see the short sticks play uh, play both ends of the field. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't bother me to get rid of the fourth long pole and uh, make, the, make the middies play both ends. Well, and, and heck, you could you could have the long pole, but keep him on the field. He has to stay on the field. Right. You could do it any one any one of a, a number of ways, but in the grand scheme of things, speed the game up just a little bit, and and at least have to wait for a horn before you get to sub. Yeah, and kind of following along those lines, Dan. I've I've noticed the last two uh, couple positions where Chapman has been on defense. Uh, Walrath is is not moving. Uh, 100 percent either either he's uh, he's he's a little getting a little bit gassed at this point in the game or he's uh, he's got uh, some some uh, muscle muscle tiredness maybe some cramping from last night's game speed move from the top that's Braxton Campbell takes it down behind the cage up top shot Carter that's a goal for Colorado State yeah, and there's our uh, there's our Sunfield shot right there, Dan. I don't think uh, I don't think Sathram had a chance of of seeing that ball coming out of the coming directly out of the sun like that. Oh, that one coming at uh, two minutes and 33 seconds. Takes That's it down behind the cage. Quarter goal of the day. Up top, shot Carter. That's a goal yeah, for Colorado State. To that shot. It, it really looks like he didn't see it until it was past him. Okay, Todd, how did he see it if it was already past him? <laughs> I think he saw the shadow go past him. 
Ground ball. Finally picked up. No, out of bounds. They're going to give it to Colorado State. That was off the stick of Timmy Andrews out of bounds. And Josh Gregg from Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado is going to start the possession for the Rams. According to Coach Smith, Gregg is one of the best athletes on this squad. Could run all day. There's been a change in goal for Colorado State. While well, Chapman is stuck with Sathram. Coach Dallas Hartley must like uh, the way Sathram's playing so far, opting not to make a goalie switch at halftime. But Colorado State has, and that's Colton Fatzinger in the pipes for the Rams. Alex Smith high on both of his goalies. Turnover, Rams. Shields brings it the other way for Chapman. Yeah, wall ref. Shields makes one move, goes to the left. Nice shot. Pushed wide by Katzinger and out of bounds. Wall ref is really having trouble getting up and down the field, Dan. I, I don't know if he's hurt or uh, just, just gassed from uh, last night's game, but he's really having problems. Good job by Helmich getting to the loose ball. He's going to hold it up while we substitute for Chapman. Just over 11 to go, 5-4 to four Colorado State. The Rams clinging to that one goal lead. Andrews and Fiore behind the cage. That's Fiore with it. He'll look up top. Alex Williams for the Panthers. Good job of switching the stick around by Alex Williams, keeping it away from Colorado State's defense. He's being marked up by Zach Arthur, actually an LSM from Cherry Creek High School in Greenwood Village, Colorado. That's Clayton to Helmich. Helmich shot out of bounds, backed up by Timmy Andrews. Long possession for Chapman. Andrews comes out from behind the cage. Circles back and gets clocked in the head. That one's a uh, flag down on Hayden Porter, the six foot, 190 pound defenseman from Heritage High School in Centennial, Colorado. Yeah, this is probably gonna be a non-releasable foul, Dan. The uh, officials are really putting an emphasis on any kind of contact to the head. And uh, uh, that the, the uh, uh, make those to make those penalties non-releasable. They're they're really really uh, looking out for the safety of the players, and and uh, you can see here is uh, Andrews comes out from behind the cage. That was Hayden Porter. Yeah, uh, comes around and and uh, really gets gets cross checked in the, in the helmet. Back and, uh, and gets uh, clocked in the head. Least one minute and certainly non-releasable, and it is. I think that was Andrews that took the hit also. W with that, uh, we lose uh, 11 goals for Chapman so far on the year. See how Andrews does. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. That was a, that was a fairly, uh, fairly nasty hit. Again, that might have been another candidate for our Bam Shaft Bam of the game, but unfortunately, there's a flag dropped on it. We need a, a clean, legal, good hard hit. Good work by Chapman, good job by the Colorado State defense. Sammy Simo in the game for Chapman. Up top to Helmich, Helmich fires the shot. Batsinger makes the save. Fiore picks it up. This one's gonna go all the way out to midfield. It's gonna be kept in the offensive zone for Chapman. That was a real solid play by the Chapman long pull, Zach Nickelman. Yeah, an ill-advised feed from Fiore from behind the dam. There's a shot and a goal. That one off the stick of number six, Thomas Zervis, the 5'9", 165-pound midfielder from Bellevue, Washington. Chapman tying it up, number six, 
Paul Zach Nickelman. Yeah, an ill advised feed from Fiore. Yeah, Chapman works yeah. at the uh, top. There's a shot in the goal. That one off the. That service from Helmich at 542, nodding the score at five. Walrath and Warfield to do battle at the X again. It's a good job by Walrath. He'll scoop up another ground ball. Take it back into the zone. Kick it to his goalie, Satherham. Satherham tries to clear and pass unable to be controlled on the far sideline and it'll turn over to Colorado State. Rams will start the ball down that far sideline and behind the cage. Yeah, CSU is still a man down here, Dan, so they're trying to kill the penalty. Nice job of getting on the uh, getting on the ball carrier's hands by Walrath, forced the uh, pass out of bounds. Tommy Wolf. A senior defenseman from the Waterford School in Sandy, Utah. Good clear. Simo has it for Chapman. Worked the ball behind the cage. That's Warren Brody. Haven't heard much from him today. Brody just a freshman. Francis Parker High School in San Diego, California. Brody did have one of the goals last night. Nice save by Fatzinger. Chapman will maintain possession. That's Zervis. Helmich picks up the ground ball. Inside to Fiore, he shoots and scores. Very nice. Madison Fiore with his fourth, accounting for two thirds of the Chapman goals. Yeah, good hustle play by Chapman on that loose ball. They uh, stuck with it over on the sideline. Uh, by Fatzinger. Patience and uh, tenacity pays off. You see the ball come out here. Helmich Chapman will maintain possession. That's Zervis. Helmich. Picks up the ground ball inside the Fury shooting score. Ground ball still down, that's Walrath. Walrath with the pull. It's gonna settle it in and leave the field. He gives it up to Rafter. He's playing catch with Fiore and Shields up top. Chapman's come back from a Three to one deficit to take a six five lead here in the third quarter. Good slide preventing motion to the inside by Josh Gregg, but there's Shields on the bounce shot. He shoots and scores. Fatsinger does not seem to have the goalie stick working real well so far. And it's seven to five Chapman. Yeah, real nice individual uh, move there by Shields. Uh, driving the right alley. Uh, you see him, uh, Good slide, preventing college. motion to the inside. Good job, Greg McDowell. He's on the bounce shot, he shoots and scores. For Chapman in the last two minutes and 14 seconds. And they've opened up a two goal lead on the Rams. Great wing play by Hat Knowles on the face off. Ball still loose. It ends up in the stick of Chapman shoots and scores. There's another one. That one's 
Rafter on the goal. Rafter from Tustin, California. Alex Smith needs a timeout in a bad, bad way. That's a four goal run now for Chapman. And there's that timeout we were talking about. Pulls on the face off. Before heading to break. Yeah, again, uh, Chapman's tenacity and, and working on that ground ball really pays off. And, and uh, they managed to come up with a loose loose ball. Rafter takes it right to the cage like you want to see and uh, puts, it, puts it right past the goalie. Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks, San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy, this is gonna be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross, bounce, score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left-handed shot by Vasilovsky. Off one by Colorado State, taken to the Chapman goal and off the pipe. Sa sa save made by Sathram's other, other pole, the one that's behind him and over his shoulder. Chapman comes up with possession and heads the other way on a four goal run here in the third period to open up a three goal lead against second ranked Colorado State. The Panthers ranked number three. And I would not have wanted to have been in the inside the huddle with Alex Smith on that timeout. <laughs> Feet across, ball down, but scooped up. Great ball movement. That was Williams with the with the scoop. Great save made by the Colorado State goalie. That was Fatzinger. Trap the ball in the crease. Let's take it the other way for the Rams. It's tough being up at the top of the rankings. Uh, every team up there really has a, an X on its back every single game. Yeah, and I know that uh, Colorado State feels that way pretty much every, uh, every game they play. And uh, Chapman certainly uh, certainly coming out in the here in the, at half, after halftime and uh, looking like they really want to want to put one on the Rams. Carter behind Cage. Gives it up to Fisher. Rams bring it up top. That's Conkle here on the near side. Ball on the far side to Grabinas. Sends it behind the cage. Back out front, unable to control it with Sean Smith. He had an empty cage to shoot on. Chapman's going the other way. That's Helmich clearing it across the midfield stripe. Helmich marked up by Grayson Conkle. Yeah, and Helmich is one of those two-way two -way, uh, middies that we that we'd like to see. He, uh, uh, Coach Dallas Hartley will be, uh, likes to see him both on the offensive and the defensive side of the field. Chapman setting the offense again on a four-goal run. Yeah. 
We appreciate you joining us here in an, in an inaugural weekend of lacrosse on LAX TV. I'm Dan Matthews with Todd Walker. We are in South at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Chapman leading Colorado State, eight to five. Andrew Clayton lost possession of the ball. It's just a mental error. He was running before he caught it. And here comes Colorado State the other way. Colorado State in white with the gold trim. That was a nice clear by Tyler Zaber from Rock Canyon High School in Highlands Ranch. Good luck. Feed to the inside. That's Carter. Carter can't get his hands free enough to get the shot off. We've got to fight for the ground ball. Oh boy. That was Conkle <laughs> firing it on cage, and it sails wide of Sathram. Conkle, a 6'1", 200-pound midfielder from Regis Jesuit in Denver. This is Fisher near side. He feeds up top, that's a great feed and an even better goal, that one by Conkle. And the Rams stop the bleeding. Yeah, good look there by Austin Fisher. Uh, he carries carries the ball back at X, uh, rolls back away from his defenseman, uh, and finds, finds Conkle on that nice little nice little cut down the uh, down the pipe. Conkle buries it Face off one by Colorado State. Carter gets it down low, gives it to Fisher. Yeah, that was one Carter. That was a shot Carter really should have taken, Dan. He, uh, that's that, that's a that's a good uh, you know unselfish play to move the ball one uh, one more guy to to Fisher, but he really had the shot on the catch. Rams working the ball toward the cage. There's a shot and a goal. That was far side. Looked like that was 19, Jack Curry. Let's get confirmation. Those gold numbers on those white jerseys, <laughs> not super easy to see. But I do believe that that was Jack Curry. Nope, that was Rams 18, working Alex the ball Devlin. toward the cage. There's a shot and a goal. That up here in the press box, folks, uh, and I don't, don't know what it looks like on your uh, on your computer screens, but these uh, the gold numbers on these white jerseys are really difficult to see. That timeout by Alex Smith definitely paid off. Hap Knowles at the X now for Chapman. Warfield still taking it for CSU. The Rams win the faceoff. It's picked up by Zach Arthur, who promptly drops it after being nearly detwigged by Brenton Crutow. Interesting contrast on these rosters, Todd. Uh, Chapman has, has a large roster, almost 50 players on it, and yet only 14 of them from the state of California, while Colorado State only has six that aren't from Colorado. Yeah, they uh, uh, Chapman, uh, very different, very different uh, kind of. Uh, Recruiting and and uh, sort of sort of uh, profile to, to uh, players coming from other parts of the country. They're a, they're a private school, uh, much different much different uh, look than uh, a big a big big school like Colorado State. Fiore with possession behind the cage gets it on the wing to Shields. Shields up top to Rafter, back over to Shields. They'll play catch. Content to set the offense, very patient. Buck 20 left here in the first quarter. Ground ball scooped up by Fiore. Third quarter, my bad. I just don't want this game to end, folks. <laughs> we'll take good lacrosse anytime. 
And the boys of the MCLA really do play good lacrosse. If you haven't been to an MCLA game, find the university nearest to you and go check it out. I've said for a long time, Todd, that uh, these are the kids that are playing the game really and truly because they love it, because it does cost them a pretty little penny in order to play. Yeah, and with the you know the number of the number of uh, high schools uh, that are playing lacrosse, you got you, there's just too many good lacrosse players uh, and not enough spots in Division One, Two, II, and Three schools. Uh, there's there's going to be some leftovers, and and uh, the MCLA, you know, not that they're getting the leftovers from from uh, from all the high schools, they're, they're getting some good lacrosse players, and uh, we're we're seeing seeing some of them here tonight. The, these are definitely the the best of the best at this level. When you're talking about two of the top three programs at the MCLA level in the country. That's Clayton. Clayton loses the ball on the double team. Here's Colorado State on the clear. And passed across the midfield line to Zach Arthur. Oh boy. Arthur's <laughs> gonna go to the cage with that long stick. Tries to feed it up top. It's gonna cross into the Chapman zone. That's gotta be a push. Yeah, it should be a loose ball push. Chapman yeah. ball. Good job by Andrews to just hold his ground on the line. There's Fiore. Fiore with the low shot. Fiore does a great job changing up his angles. And at the end of three. That one sailed wide and brought us to the end of the third quarter. Chapman with a four goal run in the period. Takes an eight to seven lead over Colorado State. We'll be back for the fourth frame right after this. <laughs> Matthews and Todd Walker with you from Beaverton, Port, Beaverton, Oregon, just outside of Portland. MCLA action in our inaugural weekend on LAX TV. Chapman holding on to an eight to seven lead. And it's really been a, a real solid game and higher scoring than you thought. <laughs> well, we haven't we haven't hit double digits yet. Although, Two goals uh, with a with a uh, a quarter left. It looks like uh, that that prediction is going to go by the wayside. But uh, we've got what uh, what Jimmy Crum back in uh, Columbus, Ohio, used to call a, a real barn burner going here. No matter where you are, we sure appreciate the fact that you're watching us here on Lax TV. Tell your friends. We're going to be here through much of the lacrosse season. Next week, we'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. Talk about all those games here in just a moment. It's a ball down on the ground. Nobody able to scoop it up. Finally picked up by Chapman and Hap Knowles. Yeah, great hustle play there by Hap Knowles to stick with the ground ball and uh, ended up coming out of it with it in his stick. Friday at 3.30 Eastern, tune in right here at LAX TV as the Jacksonville Dolphins will host the Michigan Wolverines in NCAA Division I action. Should be a great game from Jacksonville, Florida. Then on Saturday at 5 p.m., we'll have a, an MCLA matchup between Florida State and Virginia Tech, followed by a high school game between Ponte Vedra High School and the Bulls School in Jacksonville, Florida. We'll wrap up the weekend next Sunday with more NCAA Division I action as the Jacksonville Dolphins take on Holy Cross at 3.30. And that game will be preceded early at 10 a.m. Eastern time by Michigan versus Mercer. Should be some high quality action next week from Jacksonville, Florida.
Chapman with possession. That's Andrews behind the cage. Just a little over a minute into the fourth quarter. Chapman, a lot of patience. That's Clayton. Gets it over to Fiore. Back up top to Rafter. Chapman content to hold on to the ball. Work it around, find the right shot for them. That's Andrews. Had a great cut to the cage that was cut off by Hayden Porter. Ball fed up top, unable to hang on to it. It was number 11, that couldn't have been number 11. I think that was number 10 Shields. Was that 10 Shields? Yeah. Clayton making it difficult on the clear. Colorado State successful nonetheless. Colorado State looking to even this game at eight. <laughs> Great patience by Colorado State. Tim Taggart, who had a great game yesterday. <laughs> and the ball's up top. Dodging that alley, but unable to get a shot off is Devlin. <laughs> DU Pioneers took care of business today against the University of Michigan who we'll see next week, 17 to five at the University of Denver in their face-off season opener. And at the same time, Todd, your Ohio State team that looked so good last week was a nine to three loser for the University of Massachusetts this week. Yeah, I, I tried to uh, tried to tell people last week that uh, Denver wasn't as bad as, as uh, they looked and Ohio State wasn't as good, so. Uh, uh, that that uh, that panned out this week. Cornell and Hobart were snowed out in Geneva, New York. They'll make that one up tomorrow. Drexel picked up a 14 to eight win over Albany. Providence 13 to five over Wagner. Robert Morris beats Air Force 17 to 14 in the other part of that twin bill in Denver, Colorado. While Holy Cross, another team we'll see next week, was a 15 to 14 overtime winner against Hartford. That Holy Cross Jacksonville game really could be a hotly contested game. Delaware, which got off to a great start was a 12-10 loser to Mount St. Mary's. Great save. There's a great save by Sathram on the move from behind the cage by Colorado State. And Chapman proceeds to throw the ball away. 9.52 to go here in the fourth quarter. Chapman hanging onto the slimmest of margins at eight to seven. Yeah, Mike Wolf did a really nice job uh, Kind of, kind of scooting underneath on that uh, on that last play, Dan got a real great look at the cage, and uh, Satham came up huge. We'll take a look at the MCLA scoreboard in in just a moment. Or at least we'll give you some final scores from the MCLA. Last week, Cal Poly put themselves in position to take over number one. 
in the country. They're ranked number four right now. I, my belief is that uh, should Chapman hang on and win this game, numbers one, two, and three will have all lost this week. Pending what happened with Polly, they should jump up to number one. Devlin with a rocket from about 15 yards out, and Colorado State ties it up at eight. Uh, should Chapman hang on and win this game? Numbers one, two, and three will have all lost this week. It looks like he actually had a little bit of a Then what happened with Polly? They should jump up. sure you saw the ball. Todd, your thoughts on the way the polls ought to look? Uh, obviously, if CSU wins, they're going to move from two to one. Um, but what, what do you do with one, two, and three going down? If, if Pauly did win, and I haven't checked the score yet, but if Pauly wins this weekend, do they get to move up I, I think to number one? I think absolutely they move up. Uh, you, you beat the number one team, and the, and the three teams above you lose. Uh, <laughs> de facto, you got to move up to the, that top slot. Clemson beat Florida State 10 to three. Big, big win for Clemson. And, and with that win, uh, Florida State, a team that we're gonna see next week. Right here on LAX TV. Cal Poly was a 10 to eight winner over Cal. So a Chapman win here should send Cal Poly to the top ranking, top spot. There's a flag down on the field. Looks like slash. a splash. One minute. Called and Chapman will be man up. Be Southern Methodist, a 12 to nine win over A&M today. Marymount 10 to eight over UCLA. North Carolina State beats Florida 11 to five. Missouri Baptist drops one to Missouri 10 to five. Virginia Tech, a big win over Alabama, 17 to six. They're gonna be on the other side of that matchup against Florida State next Saturday at five Eastern time. Right here on LAX TV. That's how much. Ball down, Colorado State picks it up. This will give them an opportunity to wind the clock on that penalty. That was a nice check inside. Richmond, an emerging team in the MCLA ranks with a 16-14 win over Central Florida. Texas State lost to TCU, nine to seven. Arizona State and Texas play a little bit later. Uh, Arizona State uh, also, actually it's Arizona State at number four. They would have to be next in line with a victory over Texas because Cal Poly's number five behind Arizona State. That becomes a, a, a battle for, uh, for voting popularity amongst the pollsters. <laughs> Oh boy. There's a feed inside that was a tremendous feed. The shot from Fisher sailed wide to the far side. And it's Chapman ball. The great backup by the Chapman short stick. Nice job by Fisher. Even getting the stick on this, on this feed. We're voting popularity amongst the pollsters. Tough to see the ball come through that many sticks. And that was one of twin brothers, Andrew Remlinger, six foot, 175 pound midfielder from right here in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Chapman will immediately turn the ball over right back to Colorado State. We're in a battle right now of uh, who, who wants to win this one. <laughs> eight to eight, our score, six and a half to go in the fourth quarter. I'm Dan Matthews with Todd Walker. You're watching MCLA Lacrosse right here on LAX TV. Good clear by the Rams. And they'll carry it into the offensive zone. I think we're gonna see a steady uh, steady diet of ball control here, Dan, until uh, either team that has possession gets a, gets a really good look at the goal before they take a shot. 
Devlin up top. He's marked up by Walrath. Good slide by Shields. So Walrath fights his way through the pick. The Rams content to play with their midfielders. Now they kick it down low. Nice. That's a nice feed. Nice job. Great feed. Goal scored by Casey Carter on the pass from Austin Fisher. On a beautiful assist from the aid of Pete Hager. Yeah, here are two guys that, uh, that have been playing together since Rams. grade school, and, uh, and uh, they, they know, know where each other is going to move at any time. Uh, Carter with the with the ball behind, real great feed, great great job getting a stick. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was Fisher on the feed, was it not? I thought it was Fisher. They, I heard him say Taggart. Taggart played his ball at Mountain Vista. Does not mean that these guys didn't do a little bit of playing together. <laughs> so it's now nine to eight, Colorado State with the lead, trying to ascend their way to the top of the MCLA polls. Rams win the faceoff, take it straight into the cage. That was Zach Arthur. His shot sails wide, backed up well by Fisher. So the Rams have answered with four of their own after the four goal run by Chapman in the third period. And I think uh, CSU will take some air out of the ball here, try and uh, run at least a couple minutes off the clock before they go to the cage. There's a soft shot, fielded easily by Sathram. Yeah, really not a good shot there uh, by, I believe, Devlin. Um, uh, little impatient and uh, had two, get, actually two sticks on his hands. No chance to get any kind of any kind of mustard on the ball and uh, just a kind of a careless turnover. Chapman with possession. That was Zervis coming off the bench. Fiore on the near side. Kicks it back to Andrews. Coming down the middle, shot. The bounce shot sails high from Zervis. Backed up by, Ch by Chapman. Alex Williams has it at the point. Over to Helmich. That service behind the cage to Andrews. He was looking for his cutter, couldn't get the pass through. Good defense by Colorado State. Yeah, too many sticks in the middle there. That was a kind of an ill-advised uh, feed by by uh, Timmy Andrews. Not not really a chance for that, for that ball to get through. Great hustle by Fiore, trying to track chase down the the clear, and also great awareness to to maintain being on sides. There's Sean Smith behind the cage for the Rams. Kicks it out far side, goal line extended. Back up top to set the offense. Chapman, defender running through the screen. Ground ball picked up by Panthers. <laughs> Nobody wants possession of this ball right this second. <laughs> Oh boy, safe goal out of the Sathram. cage. Ill-advised moves out of the cage. Colorado State maintains possession and Devlin has it. Back up top outside of the box, two and a half to go. The Rams holding on to a one goal lead. There's Devlin, he's Pete. clear to the cage. Nice. He scores. Five goal run by Colorado State and a two goal lead now, 10 to eight. 
There's your double figures, Todd. There you go. There's your. That's a that's a great individual move by Devlin. Again, uh, uh, sees his, uh, gets his gets about a step, uh, half a step on his man. Ducks underneath, switches to the left hand, puts it right past the goalie. Nice nice individual move by Devlin. Real strong at the midfield is Colorado State, which is a team that's traditionally been strong at the midfield. You had Taggart with four last night. You've got a hat trick now from Devlin tonight. Walrath gets the face off and the ground ball. Clears. Chapman heads toward the Colorado State cage. Timeout Chapman. With just over two minutes to go, trailing by two. Dallas Hartley wants to talk about it. We'll be back right after this. Makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross. Bounce, score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left handed shot by Vasilovsky. Taking the ball to the cage was Fiore. He loses possession. We're back live at Southridge High School. Chapman in possession, trailing by two. Minute and a half left in the fourth quarter. There's Fiore with the rip. That ball sails high off the stick of one of the Rams defenders. I think it actually just rolled out of the top of Fiore's stick, Dan. He just kind of lost the handle on the, uh, on the crank back. There's the restart. Back up top. Chapman needs to work fast. There's no more sitting on it. That's Fiore. Dodge from the right side. Kicks it inside. No free hands. Helmich has it. Good D. Ball down. Colorado State all over it. Time ticking away here in the fourth. There's Clayton. For Chapman, he's double teamed. Ball down, Rams can't get possession. Chapman fighting it. Great defense. There's a Chapman timeout. That's her last one, Dan. About 47 seconds left in this one. A 10 to eight game at Southridge. We'll be back for the finale right after this. <laughs> We're back at Southridge High School. This fundraising event for the Southridge High School lacrosse team and the Southridge youth program, I think has been a, a really hot success. Colorado State up 10 to eight against Chapman, 47 seconds left. 
And it's looking, Todd, like Colorado State was not to be denied moving up to number one. No, they, they really looked uh, really looked solid today, Dan. They've done a great job of, of shutting down Andrew Clayton, uh, who's really the, the guy through which uh, Chapman uh, offense to date has been running. And uh, they've just taken him out of the game completely. Chapman not giving up. But unfortunately, Colorado State just seems to want it a little bit more. We got a flag down on the field. We're going to stay in the Chapman offensive zone. And Colorado State looks to be going man down. The officials want to talk about this one. Make sure they get it right. Uh, very well officiated here today, Todd. Yeah, that's that's uh, it's been a pretty easy game to pretty easy game to officiate. The uh, it's been pretty clean. We've had a couple a uh, couple fairly nasty slashes and and uh, an, an illegal body check that put Timmy Andrews out of the game for a little bit, but uh, uh, fairly fairly clean cleanly played and well played game. And we do have a slash, and uh, CSU is going to be man up for a minute. CSU is going to be man up with 33 seconds to go in the game. They can wind the clock and run it out. Two really tough losses for Chapman in the last week. Yeah, they uh, certainly they, the, the BYU game, they had every, every opportunity in the world to win. Uh, this one's been a little bit, a little bit different story. Uh, CSU's really kind of put the, put the clamps down here in the, in the fourth quarter and, and done a nice job putting the ball in the goal. Rams with the ball in the offensive zone. Was that a ward, Todd? No, that was a, that was a real careless play by uh, CSU. Uh, uh, he, uh, the offensive player put his foot in the box and immediately stepped out uh, and with under two minutes to go. You team, can't do that. The <laughs> leading team is once they get in the box, they've got to keep in the box. That was, that was uh, kind, of a, kind of a bonehead play by CSU. I missed that one I'd be between light colors on light jerseys <laughs> and the blue stripes on the field. Clock's gonna wind down. Colorado State's gonna escape with a 10 to eight victory. The Rams will ascend to number one in the polls when they come out on Tuesday. Chapman's got a little bit of work to do to find themselves still. Yeah, uh, the second, second real tough loss for Chapman inside a week. And and uh, I know Coach Hartley's gonna gonna get him, get these guys fired back up next week, and uh, hopefully they'll come out of the come out of the experience better off. We'll come back for the head wraps wrap up show right after this. Your final score: ten to eight, Colorado State over Chapman. <laughs> Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle to cross. Bounce, score! Sean Beer sends it up top. Left-handed shot by Vasilovsky. We're back in time for the Head Wraps Wrap-Up Show. I'm Dan Matthews with Todd Walker. We are live at Southridge High School in Beaverton, Oregon, just outside of Portland. And it's, it's been a tremendous weekend of lacrosse, uh, really to talk about. First, last night we had Colorado State and Simon Frazier. 
followed, followed by Chapman uh, versus Oregon. And, and then today, number two and number three. And number two just seemed to want it just a little bit more. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Colorado State's effort today, uh, both on both ends of the field. They did a did a really fantastic job of uh, shutting down Andrew Clayton, uh, who who's, uh, Chapman kind of likes to run their offense through. And offensively, uh, they stepped up uh, all across the board. Uh, uh, both uh, both the attack and the in the midfield stepped up and, and scored when they needed to and uh, shut down Chapman when they had to so re re real impressive game by Colorado State three goals for Devlin from Colorado State and uh, re really a great job of picking up the pace for the Rams at the end of the game uh, very film familiar because it was exactly what Taggart did uh, last night in, in picking it up for the Rams from the midfield in, in putting in uh, three goals late and, and help maintain the win. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's going to end up being sort of a, uh, a consistent uh, consistent uh, uh, style of play for Colorado State where they really, really put it on at the uh, in the end of the game, but uh, really, really nice job of, uh, of coming out in the second half and, and uh, particularly the fourth quarter and, and, uh, and uh, putting the game away. It, it was Fiore early and often for Chapman, uh, fuel, helping to fuel a, a four-goal run in the third period, giving Chapman an 8-5 to five lead. And, and then Chapman uh, unable to score at all in, in the fourth period and uh, end up losing this one 10-8. to eight. Uh, Sum it up for us, Todd. <laughs> well, I, I think you said it a, a little bit earlier, Dan. I, I, it really looked like Colorado State may have wanted it a little more and uh, and frankly, uh, Chapman looked a little tired after after last night's game. Like I like I pointed out earlier, uh, Walrath was not moving moving as well as, as we've seen him. Um, uh, just just uh, all up and down the roster, they, they look like looked a little sluggish, maybe a little sore from uh, from last night. So uh, Colorado State looked a little fresher. They had a little bit of an easier game. Maybe maybe got some more players in uh, last night to, to give their uh, their first line guys a little bit of a rest. And uh, you know came out came out real nice, solid game plan, taking Clayton out of the game for Chapman and and. Uh, and came out of this weekend with a, a real nice win that, uh, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, is probably going to have them at number one. Colorado State moves to 3-0 and on the year. Uh, four, four games played. They had a scrimmage against Adam State, which they won also. They'll move on and play Colorado College in a scrimmage next week in Colorado Springs, Colorado, before starting the heart of their MCLA schedule, traveling to Arizona State, who should be number two in the country again, uh, pending that they beat Texas today. We don't have a final score in from uh, New Orleans, but Arizona State played Texas a little bit earlier. If, if they came out victorious there, it should be a matchup of one versus two. So Colorado State and Chapman both doing a great job of scheduling the, the best of the best to play each and every week. Yeah, you got to like the way the, the 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 concept of scheduling the the, the tough teams and not not playing the patsies to to kind of kind of back your way into the tournament or, or get into the tournament not having played a, a tough schedule. Um, I, I would say one thing, Dan. I, I wouldn't be completely surprised if, if Cal Poly leapfrogs ASU in the in the polls uh, due to their their knocking off of of, of uh, number one and, and Arizona State having a uh, a much less uh, much less. Uh, quality opponent let's say than than uh, than Cal Poly so certainly would, wouldn't wouldn't shock me to see Cal Poly jump over them Poly could definitely move to number two uh, it doesn't get any easier for Chapman uh, Boston College comes a call in in Orange County uh, next week and that Boston College team started off the season hot and uh, I would expect to see that uh, Patrick McCavanaugh's Eagles will maintain uh, the way they're playing yeah it'd be real interesting to see if they can come out west and uh, take care of business and uh, and uh, keep keep moving up the moving up the ladder, folks. Don't ter forget to tune in to Lacrosse Talk tomorrow night, where you can hear Todd and I wrap up the whole week in all of the lacrosse action with a number of our different insiders. We'll also wrap up the George Hughley trial out in Virginia and talk a little bit about the uh, ultimate sentencing options uh, for Mr. Hughley. That's going to do it here on LAX TV for us. Want to give a, a shout out and a thank you to all the coaches this weekend for helping us to be prepared and, and do the best we possibly can. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have my new uh, color commentator, Todd Walker, in the booth with me tonight, as well as my permanent co-host, 
on Lacrosse Talk. A shout out and a big thank you to our spotter, Ken Schwader, all of the cameramen outside, and our producer, Guy Yankovich from Northwest Audiovisual Productions here in Portland. Again, your final score here on LAX TV's inaugural weekend is Colorado State 10, Chapman 8. We'll look forward to seeing you live from Jacksonville starting next Friday at 3.30 Eastern Time, where we'll have the Dolphins against the newcomer to NCAA Division I Michigan right here on LAX TV. Until then, good night, everybody.